Mind your decisions, I'm Presh Talwalkar. How many solutions does the following equation have for A, B, and C being distinct numbers? Here's the equation. It's the sum of four different terms. The first three terms have a similar form. The first term is a squared multiplied by the fraction x minus b multiplied by x minus c all over a minus b multiplied by a minus c. Then we add the second term, which is plus b squared multiplied by x minus c multiplied by x minus a all over b minus c multiplied by b minus a. Then we add the third term, c squared multiplied by x minus a multiplied by x minus b and that's all over c minus a multiplied by c minus b. Finally, we subtract x squared and the entire equation is equal to zero. This is a multiple choice question. How many solutions are there? The options are zero, one, two, three, and infinitely many. Pause the video if you'd like to give this problem a try. And when you're ready, keep watching to learn how to solve this problem. So how can we solve this problem? Rather than trying to simplify algebraically, we'll substitute some convenient values. Let's try, for example, x is equal to a. We will substitute into the equation, and now let's simplify. Now notice we have a term that's equal to a minus a, but a minus a is equal to zero, and zero multiplied by anything else will be equal to zero. So this entire term will vanish and be equal to zero. We also have a factor of a minus a in the third term, so this will be equal to zero, and thus the entire third term will vanish and be equal to zero. We now simplify the equation. We now notice another thing that will simplify. The numerator here is exactly equal to the denominator. Thus, this will cancel out to be one. So the equation will be equal to a squared minus a squared is equal to zero. This is a true statement and therefore x is equal to a is a solution to the original equation. So let's put that to the side and we'll go back to the original equation. We will similarly substitute x is equal to b. Once we do that, we'll also get some magical simplifications. b minus b is equal to zero, therefore this entire first term will vanish. Then b minus b is equal to zero, so the entire third term will vanish. From here, we will again have that the numerator is exactly equal to the denominator, so these will cancel out to be equal to one, and the entire equation simplifies to be b squared minus b squared is equal to zero, and that's a true statement, so x is equal to b is a solution of the original equation. Now we'll try one more value, which is x is equal to c. We have a very similar process here c minus c is equal to zero, so the entire first term will vanish. Then c minus c is again equal to zero, so the entire second term will vanish. Then in the third term, we have the numerator and denominator are exactly equal to each other, so they will cancel out to be one. So we have c squared minus c squared is equal to zero. That's a true statement. Therefore, x is equal to c is a solution to the original equation. So we figured out x is equal to a, x is equal to b, and x is equal to c are three things that will solve this equation. Now let's do a little bit of analysis on this equation. In the first term, we have x minus b multiplied by x minus c. So we have a polynomial here of degree at most two. The same thing is true in the second term. This is a polynomial of degree at most two. And the same thing is true in the third term. So putting this all together, this entire equation, which will just be things that are at most x squared, will be a polynomial of degree at most two. However, we figured out there are at least three different solutions to this equation. But we know a polynomial of degree at most two can have at most two roots. So this cannot be a polynomial of degree two or degree one. It will be equal to zero. 
f of x must be equal to 0. So the only way that we can have f of x is equal to 0, the entire thing is equal to 0, would mean these first three terms must be exactly identically equal to x squared. Thus, this equation simplifies to be x squared minus x squared is equal to 0. How many solutions does this equation have? Well, it's true for every single value of x. Therefore, the correct answer is E. There are infinitely many solutions to this equation. What an interesting algebra problem. Thanks for making us one of the best communities on YouTube. See you next episode of Mind Your Decisions, where we solve the world's problems one video at a time.